Hey guys, welcome back to the further adventures of Hank the Cowdog. This is chapter two, Egged On by Pete. In the security business, you learn to live your life a day at a time because you never know if it'll make it past the next. Any one of them is liable to be your last day. A lot of dogs can't handle that kind of pressure, but there's others of us who kind of thrive on danger. When you're in that category, you learn to savor the moments. I mean the little things that most dogs take for granted, like a roll in the sewer after a big battle. There's nothing quite like it. Believe me, you come in hot and bloody and tore up, wore out, proud of yourself on the one hand, but just darn near exhausted on the other, and you walk up to that pool of lovely green water and, well, hard to describe the wonderfulness of it. That first plunge is probably the best, when you step in, plop down, and feel the water moving over your body, and you roll around, kick your legs in the air, and let your nose feast on that deep aroma. Your poodles, chihuahuas, and your other varieties of house dogs never know the savage delight of a good ranch bath. If they ever found what they're missing, they'd never be the same again. There's just something about it, and that makes a dog proud to be a dog. Well, I climbed out of the sewer, shook myself, and sat down in the warm sunshine. Drover was still standing in water up to his knees, and I noticed that he hadn't rolled around in it. He never does. He just wades in and stands there looking stiff and uncomfortable. How do you expect to get clean if you don't get yourself wet? He wrinkled his nose. I don't like to get wet. This water has special power, son. It revives the spirit. He kind of dipped down and got his brisket wet, scampered out on dry land. There, I feel much better. I just shook my head. Sometimes Drover acts more like a cat than a cow dog. Makes me wonder. Oh well. We sunned ourselves for a few minutes, then headed on down to the tanks. I had a gunny sack bed down there with my name on it, and I was all set to pour myself into it. I was fluffing it up again and again arranging it just right when I heard the back door slam up at the house. I perked my ears and listened. When the back door slams at that hour of the morning, it often means that Sally Mae has busted the yolk on Loper's breakfast egg. He won't eat busted eggs for reasons, reasons which I don't understand. Seems to me that an egg's an egg, and after a guy chews it up and swallows it, it's all about the same thing anyways. But Loper doesn't see it that way, which is fine, because around here, in co-op dog food country, an egg is any form of gourmet delight. I cut my eyes toward Drover. He had his chin resting on his front paws and was drifting off. He hadn't heard the door, and I didn't see that it was my duty to tell him about it. I slipped away from the tanks and loped up the hill. Had my taste buds all tuned up for a fried egg when I met Pete. He was going the same direction. Get lost, cat. Nobody called your name. He gave me a hateful look and hissed. Well, you know me. I try to live by the golden rule. Do unto others, but don't take trash off the cats. Pete was in the market for a whipping, seemed to me, so I obliged him. I jumped him, rolled him, buried him, cuffed him a couple times, and generally gave him a stern warning about how cats are supposed to behave. After I'd settled that little matter, I trotted up to the yard gate, ready for my egg. Sally Mae was standing there with her hands on her hips. I sat down and swept the ground with my tail, gave her a big smile, and sat up on my back legs. picked up this little trick some years ago. It was pretty tough to learn. I mean, it takes balance and coordination and considerable athletic ability, but it's paid off more than once. People seem to love it. They like to see a dog beg for what they're going to give him anyway. Don't ask me why, but they do. Begging sort of goes against my grain, though. I mean, my ma was no ordinary mutt. She had papers and everything, and cow dog pride sort of bred into me. But a guy has to make a living, and now and then he finds himself cut in a few corners. So I went up on my hind legs. Sometimes I get my balance the first time, and sometimes I don't. This time it worked. I balanced myself on two legs, and then to add a special touch, I wagged my tail and moved my front paws at the same time. I don't believe the trick could have been done any better. It was a real smasher. I was so busy with the trick that I didn't notice the sour look on Sally Mae's face. Hank, you big bully, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for picking on that poor cat. Just for that, you don't get the egg. Here, Pete. In a flash, Pete was there. I mean, when it comes to freeloading, he has amazing speed. And he started eating my egg. That really hurt. Sally Mae gave Kitty Kitty a nice motherly smile and then turned a cold glare on me. And besides being a bully, you smell awful. How could she say that? I'd just taken a bath, shampooed the whole nine yards. I mean, a guy can't spend his whole life taking a bath. He's got to get out sometimes, and when he does, it's just natural that he picks up a few of the smells of the earth. Besides that, I knew for a fact that Pete hadn't taken a bath in years. He hated water even more than Drover did, and he had dandruff too. You could see it all over him, looked like he'd been in a snowstorm. What kind of justice do you have when a dog that takes a bath every day, and sometimes two or three times a day, gets accused of smelling bad? Oh well. 
Pete was chewing on my egg, and every now and then he'd turn his eyes toward me and give me a grin. Let me tell you, it took tremendous self-discipline for me to sit there and watch when all of my savage instincts were urging me to tear down the fence and pulverize the cat. Sally Mae went back into the house. I should have left right there, just walked away and tried to forget the whole thing, but I didn't. Pete had laid down in front of the plate. I mean, he was too lazy to stand up, and he, he was purring and flicking the end of his tail back and forth, chewing every bite 23 times. I'm going to stop there. See you for the second half of chapter two.